I am Legally Insane, and you're watching episode 6.9 of my 6.9 episode series discussing 69 Xbox 360 prices that are going up. I made this list about one year ago today, and I'm finally getting around to completing the series. And since that time, some of these prices have gone to the frickin' moon and back. Well, actually, they haven't come back. They just went straight to the moon. And they ain't coming back. That's the thing. Unless you've been living under a rock. Maybe you haven't noticed, but a lot of the prices are way up. But guess what? This is what I've been trying to drill in since episode one. Yes, some of the prices have gone sky high. Some of them might even seem very expensive. Well, and it's a, a, an easy comparison to make, an easy conclusion to come to, considering in some cases just 30 days ago there were some $20 games that I'm not going to list in this video, and now they're over $200. $200 for the same game. But what I've been drilling into you since day one is that even with some of these price increases, the prices are still cheap. And hell, they were dirt cheap a year ago when I started. And I try to drill that into your brains as well. I've been drilling that in because guess what? This always happens with all of the retro consoles. This happen Go look at every single console before the 360. Start at the NES. Work your way up. Every console gets expensive games. They, when they hit the end of their life cycle, nobody wants them. And then all of a sudden, all the hidden gems that nobody knew about when the console first came out, all the rare games, all the collectors come flooding in, and all the kids and people that grew up on those consoles in their younger years, they start coming back and they want to collect for those consoles that they grew up on at various stages in their lives. Hell, that's what I did. That's why I also started collecting. But because I'm an OG and I have collecting experience and I've been around since the NES days, I knew that I had to get in cheap. So I've been buying them up very, very cheap. And some of these games I had to buy recently even because I, I wasn't done my collection either. So I had to pay up big money. What was it? Armored Core Verdict Day in my last video. I had to pay up big bucks for that one, buddy. I'm going on eBay just like you. I'm paying big bucks in some of these cases. And guess what, though? Even those big bucks, I know that that's that's cheap. I could pay 100 bucks today, but I know she going to 200, she going to 300, some of these games going to 500. In fact, we already have 200, 300, 500 dollar plus games. And when I first started this series, we didn't have we didn't have any 500 dollar games when I first started. So here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to put your diapers on, get your diapers ready. Extra large, extra absorbent adult diapers. You're going to want one on. I saved a lot of the best games for the last three videos, and this is now the final video. Although I, I am going to add, um, start making some bonus content as well. By popular demand, I've already had people asking and requesting that I go beyond 69. So I will have at minimum one bonus video because I had to make some changes to this list. I took out one particular game Two or three games have shifted around because the prices went up way too high. Way too high in the last 30 days. Number 61 out of 69, we got ourselves Tornado Outbreak. And this bad boy right here, believe it or not, is a Konami game. Uh-oh, hope I didn't tear something. Heard something noise. The seller that I got this from a long time ago added that little spider-man thing i think that's a spider-man coin i don't know why he put that in there I, i've left it in there because it's kind of cool mint condition i got mine about two years ago i'm gonna say feels like at least two years ago i paid 35 dollars on ebay i knew it was going up i mean it's a no-brainer because <clears throat> this particular game is a game that nobody ever talks about shockingly considering it's a konami game very high quality game here. 2009 release. It's classified as an action adventure game. The gist of it is the simplistic, <clears throat> the short version is you are a tornado, obviously, and you run around and as you destroy things and 
and collect various objects, you get bigger and stronger. And the bigger and stronger you are, the more things that you can destroy. That's that's the very short answer in how you play. That's the main gameplay mechanic. Now, interestingly enough, when it first came out, it got, you know, mixed to average reviews. So we're talking, I wrote it down, we're talking 6.75 out of 10 from Game Informer, 6.5 from GameSpot, and a 6.5 from Nintendo Power. Mind you, that would be the Wii version. There is a Wii version, but obviously the Wii version sucks. If you're going to get the game, get the 360 version or the PS3 version. So in my opinion, this is actually one of the better games on the entire console. One of my personal favorites on the entire Xbox 360. It's simplistic, it's easy, and it's fun. It's meant to be fun, stupid, mindless fun. It's got a story, but nobody really cares about the story. And it's unique. So let's pull up the chart here. And while we're looking at this chart, I want to quickly remind you that this is a Konami game. Okay, everyone knows Konami. What's Konami known for? High quality games, not just Castlevania. They're known for high quality games. So for, for a Konami game to go under the radar, the way that this game did is quite shocking. A high quality Konami game that nobody knew about. To this day, nobody, not enough people talk about it. It is gaining popularity, as you can see in the chart. So more and more people are finding out about it. But for the fact, the fact that this game, look at this. The fact that Tornado Outbreak, an uncommon Konami game, was selling for $10 in 2020 is shocking. That's unheard of. By the way, this chart here shows US dollars. I need to point that out. But when I'm talking about the price down here, I'm talking Canadian dollars because I am familiar with Canadian dollar uh, pricing. Okay, and also this chart doesn't change. So when I hear $36 Canadian, for example, I think, oh, that's cheap. So when I, Or when I hear $36 US dollars, I think, ah, you know, that's kind of a cheap game. You know, really good price, good time to get in. But when you convert that in, and that's equivalent to roughly $50 Canadian, I say, whoa, you know, I really understand more on uh, whether that's a high price or a low price or not. It converts better in my brain. And just so you, those unfamiliar with price charting, it does give you, it doesn't give you the exact price. It kind of shows the, tr the trend, okay? So it might not show the exact highs and the exact lows, but the trend is there, so it's... It's good for showing you the the average. So this game used to trade for 10 bucks, which is, you know, I, I wish I bought 20 copies back then. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't even know about it back then. So when I'm talking about how shocking it is that nobody knew about this game, nobody was talking about this game, it's complete hidden gem. Absolutely monster hidden gem. Well, hell, I didn't even know about it, and I consider myself to be the hidden gem uh, master. So around that 2020 time, when, uh, you know, roughly around 2019, 2020, a lot of 360 games started to take off in general. And a lot of people will tell you, oh, that's the COVID move. Yeah, yeah, a lot of games moved up during the COVID move. But if you haven't noticed, they stayed up for a reason. Because guess what? They were all going to go up anyway. The move that happened during COVID was going to happen with or without COVID. It may have accelerated things. But that's all it did. It was going to happen regardless. So everyone and their mother, the people, the inexperienced collectors, thought that all the game prices were going to come crashing back down. Well, those people don't actually understand game collecting. They don't understand the rarity of these games. They don't understand that inflation plays a big role. In fact, this move might have been, instead of saying, oh, it's from COVID, people staying at, at home, you might say, hey, maybe it was from inflation. And inflation ain't going away. Inflation's been getting worse, in case you haven't noticed. As a matter of fact, guess what? The, the price is out right now is still cheap. This is dirt cheap. You tell me you can get this game for $45? That is cheap. So let's, uh, let's have a look at sold listings. Back in uh, October, we can see sales going all the way back to October. Yeah, this was sitting around $35, $40 game. Let's just call it a solid $40 game, because this doesn't always include shipping. That's why it's really tough to you know get the exact prices from price trading so it's about a 40 dollar game roughly what i paid i paid 35 not bad but as you can see it's been creeping up so look at this uh oh that this one here um 
shouldn't even be in the list. By the way, this corrupts the averages too because it's not it's not always CIB. Right, this one this one might not have been CIB either. This one clearly wasn't CIB. 25 for CIB, I don't think so, buddy. 35, 35. We're seeing a lot of 35s. Now we're starting to see a lot of 40s. Slowly creeping up. More 40s and less 30s. More 40s, less 30s. Now the 50s are starting to creep in. Do you see a trend here? Because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for trends. See more 30s, but now we're getting clo itching closer. More and more of those 50s showing up. And Like I said, look at this one. It's probably CD only. So look for those CIBs. Now you're seeing nothing but 40s and, and 50s for your CIBs. 40s and 50s, and now guess what? You don't even see 30s no more. Fast forward to February. So when you go from October 2023 to February of 2024, you ain't getting your 30s ever again for the rest of your entire life. You guys think I'm exaggerating? I'm not. You will never see this game for $35, $40 again in your entire life, Canadian dollars. In fact, you'd be hard-pressed to find it for 60 In fact, you're going to be paying taxes on top of that too. Mind you, well now now it's selling for basically hundred bucks. Round this up, night eighty nine forty five hundred bucks as of March. Uh, oh, sorry, April tenth, two days ago. It's made its first initial up, and I do fully expect that it will make another wave up. And and a lot of these games they do move in waves. That's a common thing. It's it's very common that a lot of games will move in waves, and same thing happens with stocks all the time. So it doesn't have to be slow and steady, although, yeah, it's nice to look at a chart when you do see a slow and steady riser, but sometimes it just happens to waves. The market does crazy things, and sometimes the market is awoken by a certain event that happens. I've mentioned this in all my previous videos. Million subscriber plus YouTuber mentions a hidden gem happened with Phantom Dust or the OG Xbox. It can happen with any game at any given time moment just be aware of that some of these waves are caused by certain events and other times they're not they seemingly just come out of nowhere the market just wakes up you know starts with a handful of people that go and purchase the game and then more people go and purchase it and then more people see the trends of what's going on holy crap i had this game on my watch list for three months it's it's doubled no holy crap and then they start to panic buy and you get more panic buyers you get the fomo crowd coming in happens all the time in the retro games and it also happens in stocks it's a normal psychological thing that happens nobody wants the game when it's cheap and then it doubles in price more people want it and then it doubles again more people want it doubles again even more people want it now it's now so all of a sudden everybody wants it but they didn't want it when it was cheap they didn't want it at 10 bucks nobody wanted tornado outbreak at 10 bucks let's move on to game number 62 we got ourselves one of the rarest games on the entire console. Zoid's Assault. I debated taking this one off, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I wasn't going to bring this one up, but it was on my original list. I decided to keep it. This is a turn-based strategy RPG released in 2009. So there's two things to take note of here. One, it's an RPG. Number two, it's published by Atlas. And this was back in the days when Atlas still had very low print runs. That doesn't hold true today. Atlas has become one of the big time top dog publishers. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, they teamed up with Sega, Unicorn Overlord. Like Atlas has got many, many big name franchises under their belt today. And they don't do low print runs anymore. Okay, but back in the day, that's what they were known for. They would get the obscure games, and they, and they still do to a certain extent, but back then, that was their main focus. They would get these obscure games that other publishers typically turned down. They're getting like the secondhand pickings, you know, the, the, the washed out goods that nobody else wanted. And, and they would get them, and they would publish them, and they would do lower print runs on these titles because they were taking a lot of risk. You know, these aren't AAA titles. <laughs> Atlas would have published this knowing dang well that this was not a AAA Final Fantasy Tactics. In fact, do not purchase this if you're looking for a really good strategy RPG because this is not a really, really good one. But hey, it's 
it's okay. It's not a bad game, arguably. If you like RPGs, if you're a hardcore strategy RPG fan, you might be interested in this game. Or if you're a hardcore collector, okay, there's two types of people that are going to be buying this game. And in some cases, you might be both, like myself. I'm a hardcore collector, and I freaking love RPGs, even bad RPGs, or so-called bad RPGs. And what do we know about RPGs? They hold their value. Horror games and RPGs are the best types of games for holding value. And, and or going up in value, okay? An RPG like this will hold its value at the very least. At the very least. Well, in this case, um, yeah, you used to be able to get it for cheap. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, good luck even getting a copy right now. Because, did I mention the game is rare as hell? One of the rarest games on the console. Let's pull up the chart. So I had this one on the list for a long time. Saved it for last. I saved the best for last. I did not expect this to go to the moon the way that it has. And when I say that, what I really mean is you can't even get a copy for sale anymore. Somebody went in and just cleared them all out. And you'll see it in the sales. So, okay, we're going back to December. You know, it, it sells consistently. It's not exactly a halo. Sells consistently. If you go to January of this year, look at that. You could get what was possibly a manual and CD only 20 bucks. CIB 40 bucks. 50 bucks complete. 50 bucks complete. It's starting to creep up now, as you can see. You're not getting one for less than 50. That's for sure. 50 bucks. Well. That was in February, fast forward to March. In particular, mid to end of March, because that's when a lot of games just went bonkers. Somebody must have talked about this, or maybe a flurry of YouTubers mentioned it at the same time. I don't know, but you can't get your hands on a copy. All of them have been bought, and as you can see, some poor sucker had to pay close to 100 uh, I saw a new one that was on Mark... Uh, being sold for a hundred ninety nine ninety five plus shipping. I saw that uh, somebody bought it, or maybe it was D maybe the seller took it down. Uh, price charting might not have updated, but I kid you not, there was one for nine ninety five plus like fifteen or ninety nine ninety five plus fifteen dollars shipping Canadian dollars, and it disappeared because I was eyeing it, and so I I just kind of assumed somebody bought it. If the seller realized what was going on, that smart son of a bitch probably just took it down. <laughs> I wouldn't have sold it for that price either, buddy. So just be aware that there might not be anything for sale, so you're going to want to look locally. Look at all your local shops, your pawn shops, put it on a watch list, and just be aware that this game exists if you want it, because you might not be able to get it. And, and the chart, I mean, it's a prime chart. It was a slow and steady riser. Didn't have any major moves. Beautiful looking chart. By some miracle, it, it dropped down a little bit here, but that might have been corrupted data from non-CIB listings being added to the CIB category. That's a flaw in price charting. Could have been any number of things. And what has started here, and price charting is still updating and trying to and doing catch up as we speak. You'll see this parabolic move up at the end here. So when did this start? Oh, January. Wow. Let's round up. That started in February. Let's round up. February. And this is a para frickin' bollock move. And what this chart might end up going? Double this line, straight line up. That's where it's going. This might say $80 US. Pretty soon. Maybe even 100 in a very parabolic move in a straight line up. Because what's happened is, I mean, people are just awake to the fact that this exists. That's all this is. I may have forgot to mention one thing as well. This is an Xbox 360 exclusive. So that's definitely playing a role as well. People are on the hunt for 360 games. We are in that prime time territory where things are starting to move. 
I've noticed monster frickin' moves since around that February time. Prior to February, things were slow pickings. They were just moving up nice and slow and steady. You know, you had your odd little mini moves here or there. But it seems like things are ramping up to that next wave. We are in like a wave two move now. Previously, we were in wave one. Well, I think wave two has started. Wave two. Two, for the first time in history, we have begun Wave 2, that a new flood of collectors and people that grew up on these consoles have flooded in, and I'm noticing the 360 become a hot console. It's an underrated console, always was an underrated console. Number 63, speaking of RPGs, might as well show this one up next, one of my all-time favorites, Knight's Contract. Although this is not, okay, this is not technically an RPG. But I think of it as an action RPG. But in reality, for whatever reason, it's classified as a hack and slash action game. So Knight's Contract was published in 2011 by Bandai. They make, they published a lot of really unique, interesting games. They also did, what was that other RPG? Magna Carta 2, I'm fairly certain. Fairly certain they did Magna Carta 2. They did a lot of really unique games, and you know what? A lot of them, they didn't exactly have super high print runs either. Hell, they might have done Cult Sub Saga. Was that Bandai? I think it was. Hey, if it was, which I'm pretty sure it was, there's further proof that they had low print runs. Because that game had a crazy low print run. A very huge hidden gem. Nobody knew about that game. Nobody knew about it. In fact, I think I was the only one that knew about it. <laughs> That's how rare and unknown that game was, and still is, technically. I mentioned that in uh, video number four or five, I think. Let's have a look at this chart. You're going to want to see this. What did I say earlier about RPGs? Well, they go up in value. <laughs> That's That's just kind of how it is. Okay, That's the, what the market has decided. There's a lot of hardcore RPG fans, hardcore RPG collectors, and they're, they're typically good games. And you get a lot of value out of RPGs. You don't get one hour of gameplay. You get 40, 100, or more hours worth of gameplay. This chart is about as good as it gets. Slow and steady since 2018. You could have paid 10 bucks. And I'll, I'll take a gander and bet my left nut that you didn't pay 10 bucks for it because you didn't know it existed. Had you known it existed, you might have paid 10 bucks. You know, Slow and Steady Riser had that huge, oh, a delayed COVID move. Look at that. I wouldn't even call that a COVID move. That was just a market waking up move. April 2021, the market woke up and the market slingshotted that bad boy up to about a double. That's a roughly double. Round up, that's a double. So it went from 20 bucks to, let's just round up 40 bucks. Keep it simple. He was looking for a base. Shot back down temporarily. So the, the base failed. It, it failed. That's what it looked like. Yeah, it almost looks like it tried to break out. We had a double top here. And then it looks like it bottomed. Oh yeah, look at this. Okay, double top. And if, if my technical analysis remembers correctly, double top is the opposite of a double bottom. What happens after a double top? See, see, it failed to break out. It, it didn't even get all the way up. Just a complete fail. Shot back down after a failed double top. Couldn't break out. Couldn't do it. Support wasn't there. Came back down. Hit a double bottom. That's a magic double bottom, boys. What happens after a double bottom? 99% of the time, very high success rate in a double bottom. Sh slingshots up to the moon. That's what happened here. <laughs> Classic double bottom. Wow, and she's still climbing. She hasn't stopped. Look at that chart. She's, she hasn't even taken a, a breather yet. She hasn't even taken a breather. She's not even um, looking for a floor yet. You know, it'll be interesting to see what this chart looks like in a couple of months. To see if, see if it starts producing a floor. But wow, what a beauty. Holy hell, guys. So what you do in this game is you're running around in this medieval fantasy world, hack and slash RPG elements, 
and the your escort you're escorting this girl around and she's controlled by the AI but what you can do is she has um, her own abilities she's like a witch that has spells and some abilities and you can chain your abilities together okay so you can upgrade your abilities you can upgrade her abilities with souls that you capture from enemies which is basically your leveling up system that's where the rpg comes in that's why i hell i call it an action rpg so what made this game a hidden gem that nobody knew about and that the market completely ignored i think relates to the fact that it got mixed to very terrible reviews which is a common thing i see in these rare games and hidden gems it's almost like it's mandatory that your game get bad reviews and if it got bad reviews you've got a high chance that it's going up in value <laughs> that's what i've seen happen this is like a common theme go watch all my previous videos it happens all the time so <clears throat> right here this game got a 3.5 out of 10 from IGN, 4.9 out of 10 from Game Trailers, and the most realistic review came from Game Informer with a solid 7 out of 10. And that's that's a realistic review. That's what this game should have gotten. Uh, you know, an 8 seems like a little bit too high, but 7 out of 10, man, that's solid. That's a solid rating. It's not a AAA title. AAA titles are worthless. <laughs> they wouldn't be, I wouldn't be mentioning it if it was a AAA title. So when you go in and you buy these games, don't go into these expecting Final Fantasy. Some AAA $50 million budget game, that's not what you're going to get, but you're going to get a solid game with solid experience. In fact, the, the other thing that I want to point out is a lot of the reviewers were bashing the AI. So that little witch character that you're escorting around, she has terrible AI. <clears throat> But in my opinion, no, she doesn't. And I found that shocking that they cared so much about that. I don't care. I look at a game like, why would that bother me? I'm used to it. See, that's the problem, maybe. Because I look at a game like Secret of Mana for the Super Nintendo, game that would, in many cases, get a 10 out of 10, an all-time classic, one of the best action RPGs to this very day of all time. That game had some of the worst AI ever made in history. In fact, the AI was so bad that most people playing that game would just let the two AI characters that were on your team die. And I'm not even kidding, because they were worthless, and they were complete garbage, and you'd spend the whole time just trying to keep them alive. They were dumb as dirt. So when I look at Secret of Mana, and I can say, I see, it. Well, you guys give Secret of Mana a good score. Nobody complained about the AI. And even if they did, it's still got a good score. It's still one of the best action RPGs of all time. But then but then when it comes to Knight's Contract, when the AI is still better than Secret of Mana, all of a sudden, oh, the AI sucks. Uh, 3.5 out of 10. Where's that coming from? That's, that's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely absurd. And the market seems to agree. The market is agreeing with me and the chart is agreeing with me. The chart proves that the, the reviewers were wrong and the market was wrong and now the market is correcting. The market is correcting and the buyers are coming flooding in. They're saying, hey man, this is a good game. You're not going to get this game for under 100 bucks pretty soon. And in the long run, who knows? Who knows where a game like this could go? Could it go to 200? Could it go to 300? Absolutely it could. Is it guaranteed to go to 300, 400, 500? No, nothing's guaranteed. But if it's a game that interests you, you might want to consider picking it up. Because, you know, maybe you don't want to pay 200. Maybe you don't want to pay 500. So let's get away from the RPGs for a moment, and let's go with an action game. Pure action, mindless, blow your balls off fun. If you don't already know about this game, you're going to want to put a diaper on. It's not rare. It's definitely not a rare game. But it is a very sought-after game. Number 64, Wet. And I just noticed for the first time that it was published by Bethsaida and or developed by Bethsaida. Probably both. Those are the guys that made Elder Scrolls Morrowind. I did not know that. That's actually freaking incredible that, that they did that. Okay, so here's the thing about wet. 
it's gaining popularity fast. Every week that passes, more people are talking about it. I'm finding more YouTube videos talking about it, more review videos talking about it. It was a hidden gem, still is technically a hidden gem. Should have sold way more than it did as one of the best action third-person shooter action games ever made. In fact, the chart will agree. I can guarantee that. Let's pull up the chart right now because you're going you're gonna to need the chart to understand what I'm talking about. The chart is going to justify what I'm talking about. Straight line up. Doesn't get any better than this, guys. That, that's a straight line up. Just put a ruler right here, straight line up. Oh, and look at that. Oh, okay, this is interesting because look at this. We have another parabolic move roughly around the same time as Knight's Contract Parabolic move, roughly around the same time as Zoid's Assault Parabolic move. There has been a parabolic move happening in Xbox 360 games roughly all around the same time. And this happened to a lot of games that I previously already mentioned as well. So something has happened. In fact, and what this is, this further justifies that I mentioned we have now made a wave to move we are in wave two as we speak wave one already happened wave two is has begun right now you're living through it. you're watching it as we speak maybe it'll cool off and in the future we can look back and say that was wave two and then it cooled off and and we wait for wave three so very interesting to see i'm looking at these charts live with you guys at the same time when I pull up the chart, I'm looking at it for the first time the same as you. I find that very, very interesting. Straight line up and then a bit of a parabolic move. Will she continue? We will find out. <laughs> at the very least, we will find out. But like I said, this is more of a more common than other games, but it is very highly sought after. So you can get com common games that go to $100. That happens all the time. As a matter of fact, looking back on the Armored Core series for the Xbox 360, those games are not rare games. They're way uh, less common than wet, but they're certainly not, quote, rare, but they're highly sought after. And the all it takes is for a game like this to go to $100, for example, all it takes is more collectors that want it than the supply of the game. It's that simple. For a Armored Core game, Armored Core Verdict Day, if there are 89,000 copies, 86,000 copies printed, and 100,000 collectors want a copy, well, the price is going to have to go up to a point where to, to whatever level is required to get some of those sellers to start selling. And then guess what? As, say, 10,000 sellers start selling, 10,000 new buyers come in, well, they ain't going to sell it for 90. So what's going to happen in that situation? Well, the price needs to go up again. And, and those people that came in and they paid 100 for it, they're not going to sell it for 100 to you in the future. They're not going to sell it for 90. And you get stronger and stronger hands coming in and you get bigger and bigger price increases like you see here with WET, which is, like I said, not a rare game. But it was a lesser-known hidden gem that didn't get the respect it deserved, and more people are finding out about it with every day and week that passes. And when I see more and more YouTubers talking about it, more review videos coming out, that means it's gaining popularity. So this game is famous for three things, and I'll sum it up in three points. These are my words. It's famous for lots of killing with both guns and swords. Like, look at the cover. Look at the cover. We got ourselves a badass superhero looking chick here. Like, I mean, that's a good solid cover. You got to give him points for that too. That's a good main character. Sexy lady with a samurai looking katana. And a bunch of guns. Like, don't, don't get any better than that. Number two, slow motion mechanics. We're talking Matrix style slow motion mechanics. And number three, acrobatic Star Wars Matrix style combined moves here. So we're talking your classic run up the wall, do some crazy slides and, and uh, acrobatic uh, dodging. Jumping will firing in the uh, jumping in the air and firing type of thing 
and of course, you know, doing all this type, all these types of moves in slow motion, using those slow motion mechanics. And guess what? The game rewards you for using <clears throat> the mechanics that the game has offered you. It wants you to be very acrobatic. It wants you to do these crazy moves and do some insane stunts and some uh, crazy good, get some crazy good acrobatic kills. Because the more you do that, the more the game rewards you so that you can then level up your abilities, kind of like an RPG. So, you know, I'll throw out there and I'll be the one first to say, I, uh, I consider that RPG mechanics when, when a game lets you do that type of thing. So what I'm, what, why I'm bringing that up is because I want you to look at that type of game and say to yourself, are you interested in this game? If you are interested in this game, and it is a must-have game for you, do you want to buy it now? Or do you want to wait for this trend to go significantly higher? Are you willing to take the risk that this goes higher or not? That's up to you to decide. That's not for me to decide. That's for you to decide. And you know the answer that I would give. I'd pick it up. I'd, be, I'd have an eye out for this one. I'd be looking at the pawn shops. Look at your local retro game stores. A lot of people write in the comments all the time that they catch these stores slipping on prices. I catch them all the time myself. Because sometimes the price goes up faster than these stores can, can keep up. Speaking of some of the best action shooters ever made, I'm going to show you a game that the market once again got wrong. Bullet Witch. Published by Atari in 2007. Third person shooter. Oh, Frig. That's the uh, that's the poster. By the way, this game does have a poster if you want the super rare version. You want the CIB fully complete, it came with an exclusive poster and it's hard as hell to find. Where is it? There it is. In fact, it's so hard to find that the only way that I was able to get the poster <laughs> for a reasonable price is I had to buy a second copy of the game that came with just the poster and the game. No manual. And I did that so that I could then combine the poster into my other copy. And now this is 100% complete. And then I also have a disc only and case copy. And I'll, I'll hold on to that one and I'll sell that one in the future. Or, actually, if I can ever, by some miracle, find a manual, I could make that one CIB as well. Wait, no, 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 sorry, I would need a manual and a poster to make that one CIB. So in this game, you play as the Bullet Witch Alicia, and you hunt down demons using both guns and spells. And that's why I love this game so much. And yes, it got bashed to hell and back. <laughs> okay, I'll get into more of that later. But more importantly, just know, it's a... Third person shooter. Oh yeah, and I uh, forgot to mention the most important part. It is a 360 exclusive. And, the, and before we carry on, there's always at least one person in the comments who writes, who's going to say, no, that's not an exclusive. Uh, I saw it on the PC. Okay, well listen up, you retard. It is an exclusive. It's a console exclusive. It's not on the PS3. We don't, we're not talking about PC here. We're not talking about digital. We're talking about physical games. Okay, I don't care about your PC games. I don't care about that. Get your PC games out of here. Don't come on this channel talking about your PC games. But but I guess, you know, on that note, you can get it on the PC. If you, if you really want to play it right now, I'm pretty sure you can still download it on Steam. Somewhere you can download it. They, they released it in 2018, I believe it was, on the PC. So, so prior to that, it was a 100% exclusive. We have another absolutely pitch-perfect, beautiful chart. This is like as good as it gets. When I see these charts, I get a boner. That's how good-looking and sexy this chart is. And this is what I would expect from a complete hidden gem that got bashed in ways that it did not deserve to be bashed. It's a very unique game. This is straight line up. I think that this trend will 
absolutely continue as more and more people wake up. That's what's going on here. What are they waking up to? You're saying, well, well, I heard that that game sucked. That's what you're saying. I know at least half of you said, when I pulled this game up, half of you said, I heard that game sucked. Well, I heard your mother sucks too, and that didn't stop me from going to see her. Now, did it? In fact, that's why I went to see your mother. And that's also why this game was selling for so cheap, and yet here she is, tearing higher and higher every single month, every single year that passes, she is going higher. Because a lot of those games that suck actually turn out to be pretty good. The game allows you to cast spells and shoot guns. What more do you want? You get spells, you can summon a wall, for example, to hide behind. You are a witch. You get to cast stuff, and that's the part that I like the best. You can summon a wall, you can summon meteors from the sky to kill your enemies, and you can... Um, what else can you do? Oh, you can summon a gu uh, push like a gust of wind and throw some cars into your enemies. You can push objects, various objects like a car, smash them into your enemies. Like you can do some pretty cool stuff. But just just remember, although you are a witch and you can do some awesome witch-like spells, the game is not a AAA title and it has flaws, it has issues with the controls, balancing issues with the spells. Um, like some of the really powerful spells cost a crap ton of mana. So some people complain about that. Well, why would, you, why would I use that spell when I've got to conserve my mana? Well, yeah, I mean, maybe that's, that's a balancing issue and or game development issue, but it's still cool as hell. You can still cast the spell and still have fun. So we don't have much data to work with because we can only go back to February. But let's see if we can still see a trend. Oh yeah, and by the way, the prices are also going to be skewed based on whether it came with a poster or not. So as you can see, no poster. Oh no, that one had a poster. No poster, 50 bucks. With poster, you're looking at 60, 60. No poster, you're looking at 50. No poster, 80. No poster, 60. With poster, 120. As you can see, okay, I'm seeing a trend here where if you want the poster, it's getting harder and harder to find. All right, guys, four games left. Number 65, Dynasty Warriors Gundam 3. This is a very niche game because it is a Gundam game. Now, I'm not a big Gundam fan. I don't care. I don't care about Gundam, to be honest with you. Although I did play a really awesome PS3 Gundam fighting game at my friend's house. Japanese only game. A PS3 is not region locked. I wish I knew what the game was called. I don't know what it's called, but it was fun as hell. <laughs> so if Renato, Renato, if by rare chance you're watching this, that's an awesome Gundam game you have, and you should comment the title of it in the comment below, in the comments below. A very fun game. So this is, as the title says, this is a Dynasty Warriors game, but you are Gundam characters. So Dynasty Warriors, if you didn't know, it's a hack and slash game where you go and fight hordes of thousands of enemies. That's the, the very short version. That's what it is. <laughs> and it's really that simple too. But and the only difference is here is your Gundams, but because it is Gundams and you're not medieval characters like you are in Dynasty Warriors, um, because of that, there's more ranged combat, a little bit more unique things that only Gundams can do. Some of them can jump really high. Some of them can fly a little bit, you know, a little bit of flight mechanics. Typical Gundam mechanics, so they tried to make it unique. This is number three of of three there's a three-part series but i i narrowed in on number three and i didn't mention the other ones because i think that number three is the rarest one and also they added a lot of new things into number three that aren't in the other two so obviously with each version they added more features 
However, I will throw out, throw out as a caveat that um, I have heard word on the street is that number two is the best. <clears throat> I don't know why that is. I read that somewhere. I don't remember where. Might have been in a comment section somewhere. It might have been in a review somewhere. <clears throat> Maybe I heard it in a review. I don't remember. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm choking here. Um, but I do vividly remember definitely hearing that somewhere, that number two was better. And maybe it was frame rate issues. It could have been any number of reasons. But I have not verified that. I don't know if that's true. What I do know and what I can 100% tell you is that this version has the most features. Why else is this a good game? Besides being very niche and a little bit rare... It's a lot more rare than any other Dynasty Warrior game. Dynasty Warrior games aren't worth a dang thing. They aren't worth friggin', aren't worth the the case that the that the CD sits in. <laughs> For most Dynasty Warrior games, well, this is a very niche game. They didn't do high print run, and on top of that, this is a Koei game on one of the lower print Koei games, though. Not a typical Dynasty Warrior series game. But yeah, the main reason why I really love this game is it's got two-player co-op. Split-screen co-op. Back in the day, you could have done four-player online. Okay, so the first thing I notice is that the game has always held and commanded a good value. That's a sign of a lower print run game. You didn't, you didn't see this at 10 bucks ever ever in your entire life was this ever 10 bucks it's always sat around that 20 dollar mark as a niche not highly sought after but sought after enough and rare enough that it commanded a good value had that initial shot up what is that 2020 yeah beginning of 2020 pulled off and it's forming a base as we speak and it may even be looking to perhaps break out of that base. If not, though, it's still within a trading range. It is trading within a trading range. So far, it looks like it has not broken out to wave to a wave to move, which means maybe it's a good time for you to buy it. So going back to. February, we can't go back very far, unfortunately. I always love it when I can go back to like October and compare the prices. But I do see a trend here regardless. Okay, look at this. A lot of 50s. You're seeing 50s. You're seeing the odd 40. Back in February. Oh, frig. Yo, wait a minute. Wait a minute here, guys. Look at this. Do you see it? One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sales in one day. Some son of a bitch. I bet you that was the same son of a bitch that bought every single copy. Look at that. And I've seen that happen before. I've seen it happen. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. I won't name the games that I've seen it happen. But this might be related. This might be, for all we know, and, and, and I can't say this for certain, maybe, maybe a YouTuber mentioned it and a whole bunch of people went in and bought all the copies. I don't know. I don't know, but, but I have seen this happen with some games that I'm not going to name right now. Because I don't want to... Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> I would highly suspect that the same individual bought all or most of these. That is very interesting to see. It just seems abnormally high. I could be wrong. I could be mistaken. But it is suspicious, you have to admit. And, and for all we know, because look, I can't see any more beyond here. It's, hit, it's capped out. Maybe there were more sales on February 7th. There might have been another five. Okay, but anyways, the trend is still here. You're looking at 50s. You're looking at 60s. The 40s are disappearing. 40s are disappearing. Now we're now look at this. We're seeing 70s. 70s. Round up. That's 70. 
75. 82. Now we're seeing 80s creep in. It's creeping higher. You're not seeing the 50s anymore. Now we're seeing 60s, 70s, and 80s. You're not seeing 40s anymore. It is creeping higher. But, you know, let's see what happens. It might not begin a massive wave 2 move. That would arguably still be trading within a range. But keep an eye on this one. Keep it on your radar. If you're interested in playing two-player co-op, it might be one that you want to pick up. Number 66, which is close to number 666, we have Ride to Hell Retribution. Ride to Hell, CIB of course. It's not two-player, unfortunately. Uh, if you're familiar with this game, you're probably laughing. Uh, and if you're not familiar with this game, you're in for a treat, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and you know what? You're probably going to want to buy it. I'm telling you right now. It's a third-person action adventure game released in 2013. And it has a very interesting history. So it's an action game, but it also mixes various genres. So it mixes cover shoot. It's a cover shooter mixed with a beat em up, mixed with a driving combat game. Okay, so it's got three genres, what I would call three genres all in one. Now, the game was originally designed to be some massive open world game. They had a huge budget, supposed to come out in 2009. Well, there were major budget cuts. I don't know, like, the in and outs of exactly what went down, but the money dried up. The game was almost canceled. Remember, it came out in 2013, but it was due for release in 2009. What the hell happened? Well, we know at least partially what happened. Partially what happened is they, had no, they ran out of money. <laughs> And the game shows, like, like literally, the money just dried up. You're, picture you're a programmer, you're a developer, you're in the middle of the game, you're building this big game, you had a, th I'll just throw out a random number, you had a $20 million budget. Your boss comes in and says, hey man, uh, budget's been cut, you got a hundred grand, <laughs> right? Make the game, make it happen. So I think that's what happened. I think that's what happened here. You know, maybe they were, they spent the next several years trying to scrounge up any, hey, can I get another 20 grand? Come on, man. I, I need to hire a, a programmer to code this one last thing. I need a graphic designer to make this, whatever. Scrounge up whatever drops of cash you can get just to finish the game. So that's what happened. Got stuck in development, was almost canceled, got released. And as you would expect, the game was an, <clears throat> an instant failure. 110% right out of the gate. Instant failure. Some of the worst reviews in history. Many people will tell you that this is the worst game ever made in the history of video games. Other people have actually said that the game is so bad that they wouldn't even include it in the list of the top 100 or top 10 worst games ever made, because it's so bad it doesn't even deserve to be in the list. So why is this game going up in value? Well, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. I'll get to that. <laughs> let me read just, let me give you some of the reviews first. Because remember, remember, a lot of bad games with bad reviews, they tend to go up in value. Oh yeah, I mean, it happens all the time. I've already showed you a million games. Watch all my previous episodes. Look at Bullet Witch. It, it's a very common event. And yeah, some of them, are they're not usually this bad. I'll give you that, but hear me out. EGM, Eurogamer Monthly, I think that stands for. No, Electronic Gaming Monthly gave this a 0.5 out of 10. Which is, I mean, 
arguably the lowest score you can get because can you really give something a zero? 0.5 out of 10. Eurogamer gave it a 1 out of 10. Game Informer gave it a 2 out of 10. <laughs> uh, GameSpot, 1 out of 10. PlayStation Official Magazine, 1 out of 10. Hardcore Gamer, 1 out of 5. And the reviewer from Hardcore Gamer called it an offensive abomination of a game. Well, he's not wrong. Critics also stated that the game has repetitive gameplay, poor controls, outdated graphics, bad voice acting, bad voice, uh, sorry, bad AI, numerous bugs and glitches, and excessive quick time events, and awkward sex scenes with fully clothed characters. And the critics are right. <laughs> the critics for once, they got it right. I'm always on here, I'm bashing the critics all the time. I'm telling you, I'm looking at Bullet Witch, I'm looking at uh, Knight's Contract, and I'm looking at these reviewers, and I'm saying, you bunch of morons, you got it wrong. Your expectations, that's the problem with these reviewers back then. They, if your game wasn't a AAA title, they give you a bad review. Oh, oh, what do you mean you're not Halo 3? Oh, oh, your, your, your game's not as good as Gears of War? Bullet Witch isn't as good as Gears of War. Oh, well, that game sucks. That game's a 3.5 out of 10. I'd rather play Gears of War. Okay, well, that's your problem, actually. You're comparing it to Gears of War. Maybe you give Gears of War a 9 or a 10. That doesn't mean Bullet Witch is a 3.5. Bullet Witch can be a solid 7. Do you get to cast spells in Gears of War? Do you get a bunch of awesome... Uh, big ass machine guns in in Gears of War. Can you pick up cars and throw them at people using your magic spells? Because I like medieval stuff. I like casting magic spells. You can't do that in Gears of War. So, anyways, the the point being, it got bad reviews. <laughs> Shockingly, the chart doesn't look all that bad. Remember, U.S. dollars on the chart. We're looking at. $10 game, doubled in price. Hey, that's a 100% move. Some people would look at this and be like, oh, it only went from 10 to 20. But I don't care if it went from $10 to 20. I look at the percentage. That's a 100% increase. That's nothing to laugh about. That's not a small number. You just paid double what you could have paid. So from there, she has trended lower, admittedly. This is definitely a lower trend, but it is obvious she is also forming a base. And the base seems to be about $20. Which is probably accurate to what we're seeing down here. We can see sales going back to October over here. Canadian dollars, 33 bucks, About a $25, $30 game. $35 game. A lot of... It's really all over the place, actually. But gearing more toward that 35 I bet, with your shipping. 40 bucks up here. A lot of 30s, 35 we'll say. Solid $30 game, at, at the very least. Bouncing around a little bit, kind of like the chart. Bounces around, nothing goes straight up, nothing goes straight down. Bouncing around, looking for a floor, seems to have found it at 30 bucks. Now, do I think that this could hit a Wave 2 price increase at some point? Could this become a $50 game? 50 Canadian dollars? 50 US dollars even? In the long term, yeah. Short term, no. 50 bucks, I could absolutely see this going 50 Canadian. Absolutely. You can pay 30 today or 50 tomorrow. Which one do you want to pay? This game goes, in my books, is so bad, it's good. And the fact that people are paying $30 for it tells me that there's a lot of people that agree. It is a historically bad game. It is something that I would want in my collection as a real gem, a real 
piece of actual history. Something that is memorable. Something this bad only comes along once in a lifetime. It is that bad, but it's also funny. See, that's the thing. People that are playing this game today, they don't go into this game thinking, oh, I, you know, I just paid 70 bucks brand new. It's 2013. I'm expecting Gears of War. I'm looking for AAA title. I'm looking for a great time. That's what you might have expected in 2013. But the people that are buying this today, they know what they're getting their, themselves into. They're going into it knowing it's going to be a funny game and it, they're going to be having a lot of laughs. <laughs> a lot of laughs. That's what it is. It's funny. It's a joke. You play it for fun. Now it's become a funny joke game. And I think as more people find out about it, I could see that trend going up. Number 68. Cubed. This is a game that I had to throw in at the last minute because one of my other games that I had on this list had already gone to the moon. So I substituted with Cubed. This is a very, very unique game. Um, not very many people know about it. It is certainly very high, high on the rare scale, as in it had a low print run. But, that said, it's not a highly sought-after game either. It's a little bit niche, meaning not everyone would want it. It's three games in one. Published by Atari. When did this come out? Notes on this. Oh yeah, and actually, more importantly, what do you notice here? More importantly, this is a 360 exclusive. Now, it doesn't say Xbox 360 exclusive, but it's not on the PS3. That means it's an exclusive. Physical exclusive. I don't know of any other console that it's on. At least not in North America. Okay? Maybe in Japan. Or the UK. I don't know. But North America wise. You're not getting it on the PS3. You're not getting it on your PS2. You're only getting it on the 360. It's an exclusive. And it's rare as hell. Okay? That alone says the price is going up. So what exactly is this? Three games in one. You got Lumens Live. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's a puzzle game. As a matter of fact, that puzzle game is two-player, by the way. Lumens Live. Does it, let's see what it says. Okay, rotating falling blocks to form color groups before the timeline catches up. The more blocks you eliminate, the higher your score. Mesmerize yourself in single-player mode. Create and share your own levels and battle friends on Xbox Live. Pretty sure you can do two-player co-op, local co-op. You can system link eight, two to twelve players, but it doesn't say which game is, which game is um, allows you to do that. Because I would guesstimate that perhaps the E4 game, which stands for Every Extend Extra Extreme. That might be something that you could system link. Um, I actually know somebody that system linked a bunch of Left 4 Dead games. I kid you not, somebody in Calgary, Calgary, Alberta, he bought like a whole bunch of copies of the game, had a whole bunch of consoles, a whole bunch of TVs, and had a big game night party. So that's, a, that's really cool, the games that do offer that. Anyways, there's the puzzle game, Lumens Live, there's E4, which is some sort of weird shooter game similar to Asteroids, because I don't know how else to describe it. Okay? I don't care about those games. I personally don't care. You might care. You might be interested in this puzzle game. You might be interested in E4. I'm not. I bought this for one reason. No, two. Two reasons. One, it's rare. As hell. <laughs> uh, number two, Res HD. 
I've known about this game for a long time. I've had it on my bucket list to purchase it for the PS2. It's originally on the PS2 and the Sega Dreamcast. And I had no idea that this particular version existed. This is Res HD. So this is an upgraded HD graphics version of Res. And I bring up Res because I want to show you something. Here's Res on the PS2. It's a very expensive game. It, ha it hasn't um, done much in terms of climbing to the moon in value. But it's a very uncommon, somewhat sought after popular game. It's not a cheap game. This is not a uh, Call of Duty type of game here. This is a very expensive. So you're looking at about $50 for this game. 50 bucks. Okay, price charts for $50. Well, this isn't even the HD version. So you're telling me I can pay $50 for res and people pay it all day every day. Plenty of sold listings. One just today, uh, yesterday now, because I'm recording into the next day. Uh, one yesterday, 50 bucks. This thing sells all the time. Well, these idiots are paying 50 bucks for res when they can get res HD for $20 on the 360 and get two bonus games that come with it. Which one do you want? Do you want the HD version? And two free extra games that you may or may not care about for less than half the price. Which one do you want? And if you have at least 69 brain cells, I'm pretty sure you're, you're going to choose Cubed on the Xbox. That's what's going to happen. Because that's what I did, and I have 69 brain cells. Exactly. I just made the cutoff. So if I'm smart enough to figure this one out, I'm pretty sure you might be able to figure it out too. So what is Res HD? It is a on-rail shooter. It's similar to Star Fox or Panzer Dragoon, but it is uh, rather unique in that it's famous for having really good music and very trippy visual effects. So basically it's designed to get you high, but without the use of drugs. It gets you high on music, it gets you high on trippy effects, and it gets you high on life. You don't need the drugs! Screw the PS2 version. If the PS2 people knew that this game existed, I bet you they would buy it. I bet you all the people that bought are still buying the PS2 version to this day. If they knew about this version, the PS2 version would tank. I, I sure as hell ain't gonna buy it. Next game up, we got number 69, the best game on the list. I saved the best game for last. You should know that. You should know that already. Of course I saved the best for last. And some of you already know what game this is. Some of you already know. You knew from day one. The people with 69 brain cells knew from day one. They knew what the, the last game was going to be. Dead or Live Extreme number two. Na oh, Tecmo game, not Namco. Tecmo game. So what is Dead or Live Extreme 2? Well, it's a game where you get to play with the Dead or Alive girls. And, uh... To be honest, I really don't know. I've just been looking at the boobs. I have no idea what you do in this game. You're, you're on a beach. And there's a lot of jiggling going on. A lot of jiggle physics. The jiggle physics are a 10 out of 10. They, they put all the budget money into the jiggle physics. They hired the world's best programmers. The world's best graphic design artists. They hired the best of the best. They flew people in from Japan. They flew people in from Europe, Switzerland. They flew some uh, whiz kid in that they found in the jungles of, of Congo. 
word it, word spread that the kid could program. They brought him in. They flew him in. They said, make us the greatest jiggle physics known to mankind. We want you to make the jiggle physics bigger and better than the previous version. Because there was a previous version, Dead or Alive Extreme number one, on the OG Xbox. Holy hell, not only are the jiggle physics good, holy hell, not only are the jiggle physics good, but the chart is good too. The chart is one of the best charts I've ever seen. Holy hell. Straight line up. And as a matter of fact, the line has, hasn't, has never stopped. And you know what? Here's, here's what's interesting about this game. To this day, because I see it come up in the auction groups every now and then. And to this day, people are unaware that this is an expensive game. Because I've been able to get this game fairly cheap multiple times. I'm talking like 15, 20 bucks. Some, one, I think one copy I got for 12. Because the other bidders were unaware that this was no longer a $15, $20 game. I was, when it was a $30 game, I was picking up the $15, $20 copies. Because I knew she'd going up. Now the game does have flaws. I do want to point that out. But let's look at this chart first. $15 in 2019. Round up 2020. $15 in 2020 had completely doubled, over doubled within two years. Came back down for a short period of time. And now she's moving up again. This may or may not be the beginning of a wave two move. I would guess that it's looking for a new floor. So the new floor is going to be around this $35 mark. Which in Canadian dollars is roughly 50 bucks. Yeah, that's accurate. Remember earlier I said 36 bucks was about 50 Canadian? Yeah, so the new floor, I'm going to straight up say it's 50 bucks. And that's what it looks like actually when I scroll down here. And look at this. Oh, wow. This, yeah, so this is not a, not a rare game, by the way. Not a rare game by a long shot, but it is very sought after, kind of like wet. So we can only see sales going back to March because it does sell so commonly. But those $40 numbers, I bet you we're not going to be seeing these anymore. Low 40s, now we're hitting 50s, 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 60s, 50s, 50, 60, 55, 55, higher 40s, 75, 50. 55, okay, 40 down here. What was the shipping cost, though, right? What was the condition like? Because I bet you, you're not going to get it for 50. Not, not a good condition copy. I don't think so. Now, this game does have flaws. They got rid of the two-player, local two-player co-op. They got rid of it. At least on the volleyball they did. I didn't test anything else. So, if you want one of the best volleyball games any ever made, you will have to go and purchase the OG Xbox version. But if you want a game that's going up in value and has great jiggle physics, you're, you're going to want this game. Let me tell you something else about this game. It got mixed to bad reviews yet again. We're talking a 3 out of 10 from Eurogamer. But it did get, you know, it got mixed reviews. Some of them were averaging, you know, around a 6 out of 10. Not too bad. That's actually not too bad. It's, it's fair. Game Informer gave it a 7.5 out of 10, which is also very fair. Official Xbox Magazine gave it a 6.5 out of 10, which was a complete failure on Xbox's part. That employee should be fired because they should have gave it a 6.9 out of 10, which is the exact score that I would rate this game. So I have a review here from X-Play, and this sums up the game perfectly. And if this, so if this sounds like something that piques your interest, purchase the game, and if not, 
save your money for something else. Xplay commented on the breast physics and says the boobs move independent of each other. The breasts seem to have minds of their own existing on a consciousness separate from their host body. That sounds to me like they mastered the art of the Jiggle physics. But if you're into that type of thing, you might want to pick the game up. But, like I said, remember, it has flaws. The two-player local co-op, you can't even do the volleyball. Oh yeah, okay, this proves that. I just checked the back. I have now verified there is no two-player co-op. If this had two-player co-op, this would be sitting at $69 US dollars right now as we speak. And it would be going to, you know, easily 500 Lack of two-player co-op was really a missed opportunity. I don't know what their problem was, like, not enough budget, what the deal was, because the previous version, like I said, it was two-player co-op. And it, and it does have good volleyball. Like, legitimately, the volleyball on the previous version is one of the best volleyball games ever made. It still has good volleyball, but when you take the two-player co-op aspect out of it, it's not nearly as fun. I want to be able to have a buddy come over and play the volleyball. So that was the final game. I will have a bonus video coming out soon as well where I'll discuss the games that did not make it on the list or that I feel like I was forced to take off the list. So I will keep the series going and that is because of you guys in the comments who, who requested that I continue going. I'm doing that for you and I know that that's the type of content that you want. So I'm here to produce the content that you, the viewer, want me to make. But you got to leave a comment below to let me know. I'm also going to let everyone know I do have an Xbox 360 wrap video coming out soon. I have to make it and film it. It's an exclusive song that I own the rights to the rap song. It is my rap song. It will be coming out. It is a celebration of the Xbox 360 and a celebration of the end of this video series. I think you will really enjoy it. And it, if, and speaking of that, if you enjoy this type of content, consider subscribing to the channel. Leave a comment below. Hit the like button. It helps with the algorithm because we all know the freaking YouTube algorithm likes to screw me. And it... I'm not the only one that screws, too. There's a lot of small creators out there that get completely screwed, and they make good freaking content, okay? Lots and lots of creators out there, they make good content. There's people that want to see the content, but they can't find it. The algorithm's not showing them the content. I don't want to watch Metal Jesus. I'm subscribed. I will watch but that's not my cup of tea. I prefer to watch you. People like you talk about games. I want to hear your experience. I want to hear your history with the game. I want to hear you talk about the game. That's what I want to hear. And by the way, I do have a Patreon as well. Please consider supporting the channel. It's brand new. I'll have a link in the description below.